All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here. Uh, today we're going to look at conflict and civil rights. So here are objectives and standards. Please take a moment there to uh, look over them. And our desired result, how did African Americans push for equal rights in the 1950s? Now a call for change in sports. While African Americans were battling segregation in society, the NAACP also took steps to challenge sports in the 1940s. So owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers on the right hand side there, Branch Rickey, uh, agreed to sign Jackie Robinson, uh, the African American man on the left hand side there, who was a gifted four sport African American athlete. On April 15, 1947, Robinson broke the color line in professional baseball, and Jackie Robinson was a phenomenal player for the Dodgers. Uh, he won National League's uh, Rookie of the Year in 1947 and uh, the National League's Most Valuable Player, MVP, in 1949. Now, Robinson also won the support and admiration of millions of fans, and he retired in 1956, and in 1962, he became the first African-American named to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, something a little more um, emotional here, and this might be a little tough uh, to hear, but this is something that happened that's important to understand for civil rights. Uh, this is the murder of Emmett Till. Now, African Americans still faced many challenges across the country, especially in the South. Now, Emmett Till, his uh, picture up there with his mother uh, on the top picture there, he was a 14-year-old boy from Chicago, Illinois, and he was visiting his great uncle in Mississippi in 1955. Now, he and a few uh, other young African-American teenagers went to a grocery store where Emmett Till made a comment about Carolyn Bryant. She's in the bottom left-hand picture there, who owned a grocery store with her husband, Roy Bryant. Uh, the bottom right there on the left-hand side, the man with the slick back hair, that's Roy Bryant. Uh, so Emmett Till made a comment uh, to this white woman, which uh, was kind of against the social cues in the South for African-Americans to do. Um, it's not known what Emmett Till said, but Roy Bryant took offense either way. And Emmett Till was kidnapped by Bryant and his half-brother J.W. Malam on the right-hand side in the bottom right-hand picture there, uh, four days later, and he was murdered. Um, there are pictures out there of Emmett Till's body, which was an open casket, and it's, uh, it's disturbing, um, you know, um, and that's why uh, Till's mother insisted on open casket so the world could see what had been done to her son. Um, Emmett, uh, Emmett Till's murder, uh, murderers were later acquitted uh, by an all-white jury, but uh, this awakened many Americans to racism across the country as well. Now, taking the fight to transportation. When the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the separate but equal doctrine, it had major implications for the U.S. However, many public facilities and transportation uh, remained segregated. Uh, in the early 1950s, civil rights leaders decided to organize boycotts of city buses. Most public transportation required African Americans to sit in the back of buses or to stand, and African American passengers also had to give up their seat to a white passenger if there were no other seats available. Now, an African American minister, T.J. Jemison, his uh, picture right there, opposed the segregated system by speaking out against the practice. And actually, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, Louisiana, a council offered a compromise that African Americans could sit as long as no white other passenger needed a seat. So it might not seem fair to us today, but this was a compromise that was uh, a step in the right direction for uh, fighting segregation and transportation. So strike and boycott. In Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana, bus drivers refused to enforce uh, this new law uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now, the Louisiana Attorney General also struck down the law, stating that it violated states' rights and uh, reinstated segregation on buses. Now, African Americans were obviously outraged at this, and bus drivers uh, went back to work. Now, to respond to this, Jemison and an African American tailor, Raymond Scott, organized a boycott of the bus system. African Americans stopped riding the buses, and they carpooled, walked, or they pooled their money, meaning they kind of gathered their money together uh, to buy gasoline to use instead. Leaders of the boycott and city officials eventually reached a new compromise that seats in the front would be reserved for whites and the back rows for African Americans, but any race 
white or African American, could sit in between. Buses, Rosa Parks, and protests. You may recognize the name Rosa Parks uh, from previous studies or whatever you may have. Uh, but in 1955, in Montgomery, Alabama, the bus system required African American passengers uh, to sit in a section in the back and not share seats with whites. Now, an African American woman, Rosa Parks, her picture is there. That's actually her uh, what they call booking photo. She's being fingerprinted in jail there. Uh, her name's Rosa Parks again. She boarded a city bus and sat in the first row of uh, the African American section. When she refused to give up her seat to a white passenger, she was arrested and taken to jail. Now, a one-day boycott of the Montgomery bus system was organized by the NAACP, and 90%, 90% of riders participated in the boycott. So leaders then decided to extend the boycott and formed what was known as the Montgomery Improvement Association, or MIA. Now, a 26-year-old Baptist minister, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who probably know his name, was chosen to lead the Montgomery Improvement Association. Now, he was an experienced activist uh, who had a reputation as a powerful speaker, and organizers hoped for a quick victory, but city officials refused to negotiate. Now, leaders and participants of the boycott didn't just simply give up. They again carpooled, they took taxis, they rode bicycles, and they even walked. Now, police harassed and arrested carpool drivers, and even some insurance agencies canceled insurance policies of boycotters. Sometimes even whites took to violence, and Dr. King Jr. Uh, received threatening phone calls and hate mail. He and others also had their homes bombed as well. Now, eventually the events uh, grabbed national attention, and other African Americans staged other boycotts. And eventually the NAACP took the case to the Supreme Court, where it was ruled segregation of city buses was unconstitutional. So this is another win for African Americans that public transportation cannot be segregated. And actually about a month later, after uh, the Supreme Court uh, made its ruling, boycott leaders and Dr. MLK Jr. rode the first integrated buses in Montgomery, Alabama uh, about that time. And there's a picture of Dr. King Jr. there for you. <clears throat> All right, so how did African Americans push for equal rights in the 1950s? Think about some different elements in society. Think about the bus boycotts and pushing for changes in transportation, and that'll help you answer your question. Hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Please let me know of any questions or concerns, and I hope to uh, talk to you all soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.